Hello and welcome people of the internet to the top 10, 11 best games of the year. Last night we talked about the worst games of 2015, but today we're here to celebrate. Celebrate the good games, the best games that we had this year. I'm not gonna drag on any longer. Without further ado, let's start with number 10. And on number 10, we got quite a bit of a surprise. We got West Dorado. It's a game that it's made by Adult Swim, you know, the guys who make cartoons. Yeah, it's made by them. Really surprised. This game came out like two years ago, maybe on like an in-browser game. And now it's a full release. It came out this year and it's freaking really good. I heard of this game before. I never really played it until like a week ago. That's why these videos are releasing so late because I wanted to, as much time as I can to play all these games. And West Serato was freaking amazing. You should go play it right now. It's a really good game. You can pull a gun on anyone. I basically killed every single person there is. And man, the ending of that game. That is a really, really fun ending. It's really interesting. Very fun gameplay mechanics. Really good game. You should go play it now. At number 9, we got a little surprise double feature from Telltale Games. Yes, once again, Telltale Games got a double feature on my top 10 best games of the year list. This time around, it's with Tales from the Borderlands and Game of Thrones. Now I know, Game of Thrones was not as good as the other games, but I still really enjoyed it. It was a pretty fun story. It was a bit eh on the maid side. It was some glitches and graphically it wasn't amazing. But I did enjoy the story and there were some really fun gameplay bits in that. And then there's Tales from the Borderlands that really drags these two games up to the top 10 list onto number 9 spot because they... That game's good. Seriously, if you haven't played Tales of the Borderlands, you should go play it right now. It's probably the best Telltale game there is. Really funny, really well made, fantastic writing, just all around really, really good game. I seriously enjoyed it. You should go play it right now. It's pretty great. At number eight, we got another episodic game, which is quite surprising. And this one really came out of nowhere. It just sort of appeared on Steam one day, and boy, did it surprise me. Really good game, honestly. Life is Strange, it's a really good game. That's why it lands itself all the way on number eight and top 10. The game came out really out of nowhere, it just appeared, and I played it, and it was really, really, really good. Fantastic storytelling. Like, episode two is probably the best episodic episode ever. Really, it kicks off strong, like, no games really do that. That's they they made some really interesting choices in this game, and the time wobbly wibbly stuff was really interesting as well. Maybe the ending wasn't up to par with the rest of the episodes, but generally the story was really good. And honestly, really interesting idea, interesting art style, very good game overall. And on number seven, we got City Skylines. Finally, a good city builder game that just. Really, really struck home with when SimCity fails, this game comes out, it's amazing. Besides maybe being a bit too much of a traffic simulator than City Builder, it is still a fantastic game. And honestly, the countless hours I spent just getting little details right in this game were awesome. I did have problems with it, like I didn't like a lot of the spacing in the game, and especially the traffic simulation portion, where like you're just sitting freaking... Try to control the goddamn traffic was annoying, but it's still a really, really good city builder game compared to anything else out there because everything freaking failed at this failed us this year. Like, come on. And on number six spot, we got a bit of a surprise entry for Mad Max. I understand this will probably be very controversial with many of you as this game wasn't really well received overall. People had many complaints with it. That's repetitive, there wasn't really much in it. But for me, it was a really fun game. But the game was really fun. It, I just spent countless hours in it. Just driving around, upgrading my little car, shooting everyone. It's great, it's a really fantastic little game. It came out of really out of nowhere. Everyone, everyone thought it would be like a movie tie-in. It wasn't, it was a standalone game and it was really good. Of course, it did get repetitive towards the end. That's the open world genre type problem that everyone has. And just how many activities can you fit in it? It still had more and more fun activities than Just Cause 3. So it definitely is better than Just Cause 3, apparently for me. 
I like this game. We didn't really ever have a good Mad Max game if we ever did really have a Mad Max game. So this really hit hit it hard. It, it's a good game. I'm hoping for a sequel, hoping it will be a good one. And they expand on this idea because honestly, Mad Max is a great idea for a video game. And this one worked out well. Really good. I loved it. You should take a look at it. It's quite, quite, good, quite a good game. And this one is a surprise to pretty much everyone, including myself. All the way up on number five, we got Valiant Hearts. I was shocked when I played this game. I didn't expect anything from it and absolutely blew everything out of the park. This game was free for PlayStation Plus subscribers, so I got it. I was like, eh, it's gonna be a quick, fun little game. It's probably not gonna be anything exciting turned out to be the fifth best game i played this year honestly this game holy crap it's really good i love the graphics art style i love the gameplay style i love the story in it it's a really good game like i didn't expect it i finished it in like two days just two sittings i sat down and played this game because i was like holy crap this is so good i need to play it i need to finish it and i just kept going and it was interesting all the way through the mechanics the dog and everything it was a great game honestly you should give it a go. It's surprising. It will surprise you. This game will really surprise you. Of just you don't expect much from it, and then it just hits you. It's like, whoa, this is actually pretty damn good. So you should definitely check it out. And number four, we got the game that finally made it out of alpha, finally made it out of beta, and it's finally in the full release. So it can get on this list. Horizon Architect is finally out and holy shit it's such a good game i spent so many hours in it just building prisons and now you get to run away from prisons it's fantastic honestly so good so good if you've never played it or seen it you should really check it out because it's finally a good management game that we've been waiting for ever honestly from roller coaster tycoon 3 there was nothing really good as a management game this is good this is really freaking good countless hours of fun and going with the full release theme on number three, we have the one, the only, and the Kerbal Space Program. Another game that finally came out of Early Access, one of the two good games that came out of Early Access in the lens of number three, Kerbal Space Program, fantastic, absolutely countless hours building random ships, blowing them up, flying to different planets, trying to blow them up, building insane machines that you think would never ever work, and actually having them work. I mean, do I really need to explain Kerbal Space Program? I think every one of you knows Kerbal Space Program and how good the freaking game is. It's just fantastic, stunning, completely, like, it. NASA's involved in the game. Like, that's how good it is. NASA loved the game and now they're involved in it. That should be a statement of its own. There you go. Kerbal Space Program. Good as well. Now with the top two, I was struggling quite a bit, but number two goes to Fallout. Four. What a game Fallout 4 was. It didn't pull a Just Cause 3. It didn't disappoint. It was fantastic till every little detail. It was great. I'm already halfway done with my second playthrough of the game. It's just that good. It's really, really good. It has just, it did everything so perfectly. The map wasn't too big, but it wasn't too small. It's just good enough and it's dense. Every little step you take is either lore, something to loot, something to do, some side quest, someone to kill. There's always something to do in this map. It never goes old and it's really, really fun. You keep finding new things, you keep discovering things about the game and about the game world and the lore and everything and it's fantastic. It's really good. However, it does have its bad sides, like the factions are retarded all of them every single one of the factions is just dumb some of the gameplay aspects i'm not exactly too fond of the use of essential tags on too many characters not too great either but overall the game is great like this much 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 of a relief to know that they didn't fuck up a major game like this we all been waiting for a new fallout forever and they delivered they delivered a really good game so i'm happy about that it's not perfect I still prefer New Vegas myself, like honestly New Vegas is still my favorite Fallout game, but this was up there, it's really damn good. And the number one spot goes to the best game of the year, which is The Witcher 3. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, absolutely, I just don't understand how you can make a game this good. Like the care and the love, the amount of like 
hours put into development of this game is incredible this game was made so well like every little side quest has a whole main story in it freaking bloody baron quest what it's insane how good this game is every little detail in this game has been worked on every little location every little person everything was made to perfection in this game it's just this is the game this is how you make a game and cd project red also gets a shout out for the best studio of the year they deliver they deliver the product that's absolutely insane uh, if you haven't played this game go play it it like everything is so well made in it you just get blown away by the detail every little thing it just I can get over it. It's just detail after detail after detail after detail. If you ever want to know how to make a good game, how to get fans on your side, do everything CD Projekt Red did. They did it perfectly. This game has been fantastic with story-wise, gameplay-wise. Everything was made really well. I loved it. For me, it was an improvement over the second one. And the second one was already a bloody good game. Of course, graphical glitches happen. This is a really resource-heavy game, so... Frame drops also happen, but it's worth it. I can live with that for to play this game. I can live with frame drops. I can live with some graphical errors. I can live with that because this game is stunning and this game will knock your socks off when you play it. Even for people who don't like RPGs, you will play this and you will appreciate just how good a game can be. Like this game is the exact opposite of everything we covered last night. Yesterday we talked about how shit games were, how shit Jessica 3 was, and how shit all the other games were, and how little attention was put into the detail there, and how it was just badly constructed overall. And this game does the exact opposite. It does everything absolutely perfectly. So that about does it. That wraps up our entire top 10 of the year. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys uh, enjoy these games. Go try them out for sure. And let me know what your game of the year is and what is your top 10 in the comment section below. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'll be seeing you guys next time. And peace. Now bad boy, are you ready for the base? My DJ, yo, get on the case. Seriously enjoy Tales of the Border uh, Tales from the Borderlands by Tale Tale Tales. Give the